Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Wows Alive. And we're coming from Canada today with coach and inspirational swimmer, Susan Simons. Hi. Hi. Can you, Susan, can you introduce uh, everybody before we start? Uh, absolutely. So uh, these are some of the spirit orcas. There's eight of them all together, uh, along with the youth mentor coach. Uh, we've got Dixon McGowan. Can you raise your hand, Dix? And Malia Machaman. <clears throat> And then Jasmine Kramer is our youth mentor. Allie White, Lydia White, and Drew Saborn. Welcome, so everybody. These guys are uh, just a fantastic group of um, swimmers who have embraced the idea of open water swimming. And they swim in very cold water sometimes. When you say cold, like what is that temperature that we're talking about? Yeah, it's always kind of relative, uh, isn't it? So in Canada, we we swim in Juan de Fuca Strait. That's our, oh. our home base. Oh. <laughs> so we were we right now. Some of us are going out on sun, Saturdays, and we're in water that's about six degrees. In the summer, the water is anywhere from nine to twelve. Um, most often, we like it around twelve. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, and Susan, do you, um, what exactly did you do? Can you explain what the spirit orcas did? Sure. Well, we like everybody else, we needed something to keep us busy during the pandemic. Uh, and one of the athletes, Ben Van Lierup, who's not here today, wanted to do a 10 kilometer swim. And I, I thought, well, that's not enough. We need something for the entire summer. So why don't we do seven or eight of those? Uh, and we swam around the peninsula of Victoria, which was an 80 kilometer swim. And we did that over an eight week period. Uh, these are all non wetsuit swimmers. They're all traditional marathon swimmers. So um, they were they're in their skin swimming with their caps and goggles. Uh, some of them swam anywhere from 10 to 15 kilometers each time and others swam two, depending on their skill level. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So I'm, I'm just going to ask a question. Why did you do this? What was your motivation? And, and go ahead and unmute yourself and, and go ahead and speak. Dixon, do you want to start? Sure. Yeah, how come you did it? Why? Oh, I'm stuck a little. Let's see. That's okay, Dixon. That's that's no problem. Were were we gonna we were gonna go to Great Bear? Yes. Yeah. Swim up in the Great Bear Rainforest, and then we needed something else. Oh. So did did you want to do this swim? Yes. Yeah. What what did you like about it? What was what made you want to swim it? What made of Because I feel free in it. Yeah. Yeah, you feel free in the water. It's great. And we also, as part of the swim, do you remember who we raised money for? Yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit. Who, who was it? For we, you. No. Oh. For COVID? We did a COVID yeah, we, we raised money for COVID. And... Uh, Oh, I need help. Okay, uh, it's it, it's a little bit nervous, nerve wracking when you do these things. So we did, we raised a, about seven, eight thousand dollars for COVID relief in our immediate community. So helping people uh -huh. in Victoria, that was part of why we wanted to do it. And I think Dixon just wanted to do the swim because he's a crazy guy that loves open water swimming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, what other, um, maybe Susan, you could uh, select another swimmer and, and why sure. did you do this? What was the yeah. motivation? Okay, well, actually, Jasmine, maybe you can talk a little bit about yours as our youth mentor. Uh, sure. why, why did you hook up with us? Well, so the pools have been closed and I go a little bit stir crazy when there's no swimming. And I kind of needed a goal to go to do something. So Susan introduced me to longer swims and 
we started training and she said, okay, one week we're doing 6K, next week we're doing 9K, next week 10. And then we just kept going and going. And then we got this idea about the swim. And it was just nice to have a goal towards, even though it was very different than I was norm than I normally do. So yeah, that's what why I kind of did it. And Ali, I saw you nodding your head there with the goal. Is that kind of what happened for you too? Was it about having a goal? Um, not really. Um, I mean, it did give me something to focus on, but um, I just wanted to try something new and I wanted to push myself a little bit. Yes, and that you did. Um, Ali has done a 13 kilometer lake swim before. This time she, she completed 15 kilometers in the ocean one day. So that was wow. a really big step for her. And Malia, what about you? How come you did this swim? Um, because I did my swimming on the near field. So. Yeah, you, you like swimming. Malia's a new spirit. Yeah, so last this year, year. with the Archer swim, you might have 5K swim. Yeah, so Malia's the first person we know of with Down syndrome to swim five kilometers without yeah. a wetsuit. Um, and she just wanted to keep learning more and doing more. Uh, you were going to do 10 kilometers this year, yes, weren't you? Do, yes, I did 10K at um, with, with Force this year. Yeah, but we weren't able to do that. So we're, we, we decided to do this instead. Yeah. Yeah. And Lydia, how about you? Um, I wanted to be able to spend time with my friends and also like Allie, be able to push myself and see what I could do and uh, just learn a bit about myself as well and kind of learn a bit about coping, uh, how to cope with the cold uh, because I'm fairly new at the ocean water swimming. So it was just neat to be able to learn about myself and, you know, learn about others, so. Mm, you did great, Lydia. Thank you. And Drew, what about you? Yes, I really enjoyed the open water swimming in the ocean, Susan. Yeah, how, how come you wanted to do it? Why I thought it would just be, do nothing I, instead? I, I thought it would be good for me, for my health and everything. Oh, okay. And it kept me active is what it did. Yeah. And it was fun. It was. And I got to see, and I still got to see the sea creatures underneath and then I could feel the waves when I was moving. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of fun watching all the waves happen. Yeah, all those jellyfish, that was, that was pretty cool, eh guys? Jellyfish. And then I saw those starfishes that I took pictures of before. <laughs> yeah. The starfish. You remember that? Oh, of course you do. Okay. Let, I didn't know there was, so there's starfish, where, where were they on the, on the very bottom? Were they attached to rocks? Where, where they, were they? Were they were attached to rocks and, and then sometimes I had some nice photos and they're all, they're all kinds of different colors here. Wow. Like orange, pink. I, some of them are purple. Yeah. Orange, pink, purple. And uh -huh. I've seen red starfishes and all color, like maybe yellow ones too. Nice. Yeah. They're are they pretty. about as big as your hand or bigger or smaller? They're all different sizes. Really? Some are smaller than our hand, some are even bigger than our hand or, or the size of it. Wow. Yeah, Depends on the starfish. Have, some have five points and some have more than that. The orange ones have a lot more uh, points on them. So yeah. the, the uh, Juan de Fuca Strait and Harrow, uh, these are really amazing places to um, look at sea uh, life. Um, the, the strait itself is the uh, breeding ground for six gill, uh, six gill sharks. Oh. Um, and it's also home of JK and L pod, um, uh, the orcas, which is part of where we get our name from, uh, the spirit orcas. We wanted to honor those pods that swim in our waterways. So on one of the swims, only Peter saw it, but there was an orca that passed by. No way. Yeah, oh, so that's wow. kind of cool. How We're always, we always want that. We want the orcas to come by and say hi. Yeah. How big was the orca? <laughs> uh, they're pretty big. Like you, when I, I've had them before in Wanda Fuca, and their fin is about seven feet tall. No way. So if you get the male, so they're, they're quite large. They're not as big as the humpback, so they're, they're quite a bit bigger. Oh. Did anybody hear them under the water? Were they? No. 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 Okay. No. okay. No. We saw a lot of seals too. I think. Hey, guys. Oh, yeah. Um. 
I had, I was doing, so I would, so how I did the swim, I was doing circles around the guys that were swimming and I went back around and there was a seal and the seal went underneath me. So that was really cool. Did he wink at you or? <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of too freaked out to think about it. <laughs> Allie, didn't he nibble your toes? Yeah. I wanted to give my Yeah. So we often have seals when we train at a place called Gyro. Ali and I have had a local seal follow us out of the bay, uh, oh, staying wow. right on her toes the whole time. So. Wow. Uh, so you you did all these eight swims in a, a tandem style. So you were in a group. Or well, we had two groups. We had uh, we named the pods J and K pod in honor of our orcas. Okay. So J pod are the distance swimmers. They were doing ten kilometers. So the three would go at a three of them went at a time. Drew, Ali, and Ben, and then K pod uh, would join us for portions of the swim. So it might be at the end, in the middle, or in some cases they joined us two to three times during the swim. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of logistics. To it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have an amazing crew. We have the best crew in the world. Uh, a lot of them are parents and caregivers and uh, they really made the swim come to life. They made sure we were okay. We also had support of the local um, Joint Rescue Command Center. Okay. Uh, so they sent out search and rescue and they actually, Drew, didn't you get rescued? I did. What happened? Talk, talk to us about that. I could tell you, tell you what happened. When the okay. search and rescue came, I was I was swimming towards them and I got on the ladder, slowly took my time getting up and they got me in the blanket to warm me up is what they did. Yeah, because Drew, you had some challenges with hypothermia, didn't you? Yeah. And I got onto Gord's boat soon after the search and rescue came. Yeah, so, so he helped them practice for rescues. They put a big net out that he had to climb up. Okay. Um, yeah. Drew has been really working hard on cold water training. So the first uh, day, I think he managed an hour and a half to two hours, and he always upped the amount that he swam, but it was almost guaranteed he got hypothermic in every single one of the swims. Yeah. So he would get out and then he would get back in again. No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I did. Get, wait a second. I know when I get out and I'm cold, there is no way that I'm getting back in the water, but I got back in. <laughs> Yeah, it was hard to keep him out and um, and we really worked at it and we're still working at the cold water uh, part of it so he can last longer and longer uh, in the water. With cold him. showers? Yes, Tell them. I'm still taking cold showers quite often still. Oh, Two good. days a week I use the cold water. Nice. Yeah. Good. Got it. How, um, Drew, how did you know you were getting too cold? What were the signs that, that either... I could tell you... Some, some signs, either my body shakes or, and there was one day when I was in the water swimming and my body was getting too cold. When I was trying to stand up onto the beach, I fell right back down, then I got back up. Okay. There was that yeah. experience where it happened. So, yeah. so Drew, usually we had Christy beside you, didn't we? She would watch and look for your lips to turn blue and- Who was there? Yeah, Christy, Ben's mom. Oh, okay, I remember. She, so we, we kept close eye on him and, and would watch and uh, eventually he would say, he would shiver and that's when we would pull him out of the water. Yeah, got it. Now, when you were, when you were organizing all of this, Susan, you had to really, I mean, there's a lot of planning involved here as I'm, I'm learning or guessing. Yeah, there, I had to create a master plan and seven different plans because we did it over seven weekends. We took one weekend off in the middle um, and I had to look for, uh, places where we could land each time. So always a 10 kilometer difference or uh, swim or more or less. It was 10 or more. And uh, finding beaches along the way that we could get vehicles in so we could move the kayaks, finding a beach that was two kilometers from there. Uh, working uh, also with the our BC ferries. Ali and I had to swim uh, in front of BC Ferries. Ali, do you want to talk about that for a minute? What happened there? Um, it was my favorite swim, by the way. Um, was it scary? Exciting? Exciting. And 
very surprising because to me it didn't feel that cold. Okay. And I thought it would be like, you know, near the ferries, I thought it'd be a lot colder. But um no, it was really nice because um I I had uh Susan come along and it was just us, you know, chilling out. And uh yeah. Yeah, we just went for a swim around the ferry docks. <laughs> and then at the, the end, when we landed around the corner, because the, the other folks got out, they were hypothermic. Um, we had them join us so they could land with us. So everybody jumped in. And then at the very end, Ali and I saw an ancient uh, lion's mane jellyfish uh, that was so massive. We could not, it was bigger than us. It was, it, and it's rare that you see them that big. But this jellyfish had come up, it, usually it's at the end of their life, it, it had come up to shore. And I regretted not going back with the camera because I don't think I'll ever uh, see anything. But Ali knows I'm not telling a fishing tale. It really was that big. <laughs> yeah. Uh, were there any um, or many stings along the way? The jellyfish stings? No? No, uh, we navigated that quite nicely. Uh, there was one section of the swim where we went, I call it a jellyfish mine, but it was a bloom, a bloom of jellyfish. And they're all lion's manes for us. Um, but we navigated it really well. What we did was we would let each other know if there was one nearby and we would swim around it. So okay. we were constantly watching. And then our crew are pretty good at sweeping jellyfish out of the way. So if they were in the kayaks, they would gently move them to the side if they were able to. Okay. How did, how did you position the kayaks around the uh, swimmers? Was there uh, someone in front or on the sides? How did you do that? Uh, well, for the 10, the, the, those of us on the longer part of the swim, uh, we had a kayak on the left, the right, the front, the back. Okay. And then sometimes we had another kayak that was further behind. Uh, and then we also had a sailboat and a powerboat off to the, the left of us as often as possible. Okay. So they, the kayaks surrounded us and we swam together in a pod. We tried to maintain the seat speed, except Jasmine, because she's so darn toot and fast. She just swam circles around us the whole time. Yeah. And did you stop for feeding along the way? Yeah. Do you want to talk about how that worked, uh, Allie, when we would eat? Um, for me, that was the hardest. Um, but every half hour, we'd stop and have a bite to eat, um, eat all the chocolate and peanut butter you could eat all day long. Um, yeah, to keep up our energy and um, to keep us going. Chocolate yeah. and peanut butter sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, we're, it's one of our favorites. Um, so we, we did the, just the, the same as you would in a traditional marathon okay. swim where you don't touch the bottom, you don't touch the boat. Uh, the crew will pass you the food and then um, <clears throat> eat while treading water. Yeah, oh, that's, that's cool. Now, um, was there any one particular swim amongst that entire 80 that was a little more difficult than all the others or more memorable? Uh, I think everybody probably has a favorite one. Uh, the most difficult was Willow's. Uh, from Gyro to Willows, which uh, and then a bit further down, which is where we often train. The water was nine degrees. Um, and Drew, that's the one where you, when you were getting out of the water, you you fell down, eh? At yeah. Willows. Yeah, that was at Willows. I was just trying to get up and couldn't hold my balance. So I fell back down. Yeah. Then I got up again. But Ali, we had some fun on that one um, because we got a nice assist from a current. That was pretty good. We went um, between a, a little island and the and the and our our mainland, which is an island, and uh, we swam faster than we've ever swum in our lives. It was pretty amazing. So, so with Malia, did you did yeah. you have a favorite one that you liked a lot? Oh, um, it was made for COVID nineteen. Yeah, and that'd be like um, my favorite swim in ocean. I love Hawaii. And keep going, not stop. 
So, do you know, when we did the swimming, was Willow's Beach your favorite or another one? Willow's Beach, eh? Because yeah. we knew the water so well. What about you, Lydia? Did you have a favorite? Um, I think it was when I got to swim on my birthday. Ah. Um, so I got to see everybody and everybody saying happy birthday before we swam to the next destination. Yeah. It was just really cool to see everybody. So, and Nora, we wouldn't have been able to do that because of the pandemic. So that was really yeah. cool. So what about you? It was a neat way to spend my birthday. It was very good. Yeah. Uh, Dixon, did you have a favorite one that you liked more than others? The last the part last of it. One. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a nice beach. We never swam there before. It was pretty warm, though. Yeah. It's like a bathtub. 14 yeah. degrees. That's just crazy. <laughs> It was. But it was nice. We got a lot of people cheering for us and we were all swimming together and and knowing that we finished it. How did that feel, Dixon? Felt like a star. Nice. You, you are yeah. a star. You are. Yeah. Um, what time of the day were you generally doing these swims? Is it a morning uh, start and a, a mid-morning or... or uh, finish what what are times of the day yeah we typically started anywhere between eight and ten o'clock depending on what was going on with the tides and the swims were between six and eight hours depending on the distance really oh my gosh there was one where we got stuck in a really bad current uh this this swim this swim had a lot of drama to it because everybody got hypothermic too but uh, we were coming around to a beach and we got pushed backwards. So we got stuck there for quite a while. We, we didn't get very far on that one. Okay. I was at that one when I was swimming that. Yeah, do you remember you got out just before, before we went around the corner? Um, that was at Island View Beach. And then you come, you popped back in after that. And, that's, and Ben and Ali, I think they both got out at different points and walked along the beach until they were warm and then they got back in again. I was told I was tired. Yeah, you were tired. Yeah. Yeah. And then one night Ben had junk food the night before. He ate a whole bunch of hot dogs and stuff. Um, so he got really sick the next day when he had to swim and we had to pull him because he just wasn't feeling very well. Yeah, hot dogs are generally not a, a good uh, no. <laughs> pre-marathon uh, meal. Yeah, he learned that the hard way. Um, but, you know, again, like Harrow and Juan de Fuca, they have some really interesting currents in them all over the place. And that's part of why those bodies of water, it's hard to plan the swims because you've got to deal with tide, okay. but you also have these crazy currents. And I've got a current atlas that gives me every hour on the hour what the currents are doing every day of the year um, so it's a well-researched body of water um, you just got to make sure you plan things on time or you end up swimming backwards yeah i think i did you've done that too a eh, dixon and great bear great bear yeah. yeah so like we always ask uh, marathon swimmers what's next uh well we have three uh swims coming up that we're training for. Uh, we continue to train in the pool and the ocean and we're going to hit the lake soon. Jasmine and I have tested it. Um, Drew, do you remember what any of the swims are this year we're going to do? Uh, Salt Spring Island maybe. Or Hornby? Hornby, yeah, that's another one. Hornby Island. So we have a really beautiful island um, uh, across from our island that's around 25 kilometers. Uh, we're going to do that in September. Jasmine and I did a test last year. We swam halfway around it to see what it was like. Uh, we're going to go and camp out for a week at the end of the summer, and uh, then we'll do a relay swim. And some of them will do 10K pieces. And actually, Dixon, are you from Denman or Hornby? You're from one of those islands over there, Denman. aren't you? Denman. Um, yeah. But he's got family on, on Hornby. And then, Ali, do you remember the other one? Any other ones that we're going to do? Uh, the Salish Sea, I think. Yeah, so you guys are going to do Strait of Georgia and then the Salish Sea, which is uh, training for English Channel swimmers over here. It's same temperature, same kind of conditions. So 
Ali, Drew, and Ben are each going to do a solo swim. They'll do it at the same time, but it'll be a solo to see do they ever want to do an English Channel swim or do a relay or, or solos? And then Malia, where else are we going? Um, oh, um, go to Allen and that'll be like, that'll be like 5K. That, oh yeah, I'll do my 10K. You're going to do a 10, well, we're going to make it a 5K because we couldn't find a 10K. Yeah. But where do you get to go this year that you've always wanted to go? This is my first time you know, to uh, with the... To Great Bear Rainforest on the yeah. Central Coast. Yeah. And they're going to swim down a channel called Hunter Channel. Some of them will swim down. We'll camp overnight with the wolves and the bears. And then we're going to oh. come back. <laughs> they eat me. <laughs> wolves and bears. They think I'd rather be in the open water. <laughs> well, that's where the whales are, so... <laughs> Uh, so uh, Great Bear Rainforest is definitely uh, out, out in the elements. You're in the wilderness. Uh, there's not uh, a lot of people. Where we're the channel we're swimming down, there's nothing at all except for trees and, and water. Uh, so it'll, it'll be pretty amazing to, um, to do that swim yeah. this year. Warm there, too. Yeah, it's, it's a lot warmer up there because the water's coming down from the mountains, from the, the rivers and stuff, so it warms up in the summer. So it gets up to a toasty 18, uh, which again is bathtub water for us. It's, we could Ooh, sleep in that, eh, Ali? <laughs> yeah. Now, if, if um, people who are watching this want to follow you or encourage you in some way, how, what is the website or how do people get in touch with you? Uh, they can go to susansimmons.ca and they'll see uh, under coaching the spirit orcas. The other thing to do is just look for me on Facebook because we, we often post our swims on social media when we're training and, and things like that. And when we do the big swims, we uh, try to post along the way so people can engage with us. Well, everybody, congratulations. I mean, you did an incredible adventure and we're all very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye. Thank you. Thanks so much, Stephen.